When Razer released the Black Widow V4 Pro recently, I was reminded of the Corsair K100 that we reviewed back in October of 2020. With macro keys and extra dials on both of these keyboards, they seem pretty similar. And when it comes to price, they're pretty similar as well. So in this video, we're gonna dive in, take a look at each of them, take a look at their pricing and features, and hopefully give you an idea of which one you should pick up if you are eyeing one of these keyboards. Hey everyone, I'm Jordan with 9to5toys. And first off, you know, let's take an overview look at both of these keyboards if you are completely new to them. So with both of these keyboards, they're kind of meant as a flagship battle station, really like a command center because it is a full-size keyboard. Both of them have extra macro keys on the left side next to like some of your modifiers here. On the Razer, we have M1 through M5 with a command dial up top here, which can also be pressed in to change some different functions. And over on the Corsair, we have six macro buttons here on the left side, along with their IQ uh, dial, I believe is what they're calling it as well, and some other keys on top. So size-wise, feature-wise, and even price-wise, these are pretty similar. The K100 came out in October of 2020. That's when we reviewed it. And currently it's available for $190 with the Cherry MX Speed Silver switches, which is what we have here, or you get it for $200 with Corsair's optical switches, which are still linear. The Black Widow V4 Pro from Razer just came out. It's a recent release and it's priced at $230. And your choice of switches there are the green clicky switches, which is what we have. And you can also get yellow linear. Next, let's move into overall design and build quality. As you can see here, both of these keyboards, full size, you know, even though the Corsair has this extra little riser up top here above the function row, size wise, they are very similar, maybe a half inch distance uh, difference between them from, you know, the complete height here and also the width. So very similar in dimensions. They both have removable padded wrist rest, which is a really nice feature. On the Razer, it's even a little bit nicer because as you can see, the RGB carries down into the wrist rest as well. And these are all like, I think there's 20 different zones or something like that in the wrist rest. So you can really dial it in to whatever your color combination, you know, whatever you wanna do. But easy to remove as well. It's also just magnetic, snaps on there. So really easy to use. Some other points on design, both of these have USB pass-through, but they do require an additional USB cable for the keyboards. On the Razer, it has two detachable USB-C cables. So one's for the keyboard and one's for that USB pass-through. On the Corsair, it is not detachable. And then it does have the two USB plugs on the other end, different functionality there. Obviously we like to see a detachable cable just because it adds more you know, customizability. And if you have an issue with the cable, that's much easier to replace. I'm still not the biggest fan of the risers on the back of the Corsair keyboard. They go laterally to the side instead of to the front like most keyboards do. So sometimes when I'm moving this around my desk, uh, usually if I'm moving it, I'm moving it to the side so I can you know, get in more of a gaming position and sometimes I accidentally knock down those risers in the back. So I uh, prefer the Razer's design there. And we talked about the macro keys on the left side of each keyboard. On the Razer, we have media keys. There is a volume roller as well as four media keys for you know pausing and playing, skipping tracks and a mute button. Over on the Corsair, we also have a volume roller. This is a smooth roller. There aren't any noticeable steps, whereas on the Razer, there are steps. Uh, there's only a mute button next to the volume roller and then other media keys just below it. Uh, we have skip tracks, play pause, and a stop button. And then on the Corsair, we have the IQ wheel, which can be pressed in the middle to change different modes. Basically the functionality is exactly the same as what's on the Razer command dial. Then you can rotate it through those different modes. You have a profile button as well as a lock button here. One neat trick up Razer's sleeve though is on the left side of the keyboard here, so not on top, on the left side where you would put your hand, you know, if you were to actually move the keyboard, which can cause some issues, there are three additional macro keys there. And by default, they're mapped to entering Windows uh, snipping mode if you wanna take a screenshot. Also the Xbox game bar, as well as opening up a task view, which will show you all the different applications you have open, even across multiple monitors. When diving into some of that macro functionality, one cool thing with the Corsair K100, these macro keys will also integrate with Elgato's Stream Deck software. So you can set those up to you know, manipulate some different functions within the Stream 
Stream Deck software, which is a nice bonus if you are a streamer in that ecosystem. Now, of course, even within, you know, Streamlabs or whatever, there are hotkeys that can be set where you can actuate these. You know, if you set these to be a certain keystroke, you can set those to, you know, control your application as well through Streamlabs. So it's not like the Razer can't do that, but there's just some nice functionality built in if you are already in that ecosystem with the K100. And talking about these command dials on the Razer, it's, it seems pretty solid, has a nice solid click in. It's not you know, easy to accidentally push. Whereas on the K100, it's a very soft touch to actuate that button, almost too soft for my liking. It also feels a little bit wobbly, a little bit plasticky. It just makes the Razer, it's a much more simple dial, but it just feels higher quality because of it. It's not as large and plasticky as what's on the K100. And both of these dials have some stock functions built in within their respective software, Synapse for Razer and IQ for Corsair. And those different modes can be activated here. It controls different things like uh, scrolling or zooming or switching applications, but then you can create your own custom modes if you want to add some more functionality to that. So I can see how that would be useful like when you're editing in a video timeline, if you wanna either scroll left and right or if you wanna zoom in and out to the timeline, which is, those are both functions that I do quite frequently when I am editing my video. So that could be a nice feature from either of these here. So so macro keys in general, if you're looking for, you know, the most macro keys that you can get, that does go to Razer because they have the five keys on top here and then they have the three keys on the side. So eight in total. Whereas the Corsair has six on top here, but then, you know, that's it. That's all that it has. There's nothing on the side. All right, and moving on from macros to the overall typing experience, it's a little bit hard to compare these two directly because we have the clicky switches on the Razer and the only options for switches on the Corsair are linear. We do have those Cherry MX Speed Silver switches, but I can still, you know, decide which one I prefer overall. Typically, I'm not the biggest linear fan. I do like a little bit of feedback. I find myself that when I am using a light linear switch like this, when I am gaming, I even just resting my fingers on the keys, I sometimes accidentally actuate them. So I do like having a little bit of feedback, you know, tactile switches are my favorites. So I prefer the Razer. Here we'll do a sound test. You can hear both of them, you know, next to each other and compare them for yourself. Once again, it's kind of hard to compare these two because they are so different. And you know, switch style is going to, your preference may vary there. You know, my preference is something tactile, but I do know that linears are wildly popular as well. As far as the rest of the typing experience, there's a little more padding on the wrist rest on the Razer, which puts my wrists a little bit higher, which is kind of like a more neutral angle. 
which I did prefer to the wrist rest of the Corsair. It felt like it was just a little bit too low for me. I didn't prefer that, you know, when directly comparing it to the Razer. And moving over to some more of the hardware side of things, these both have some of the latest technology for processing. On the Corsair, which once again came out in October of 2020, their processor goes up to 4,000 hertz polling rate. You know, the industry standard is usually around 1,000 hertz polling rate. And so this is technically four times faster, which means it's giving the signal to the computer four times faster than what the industry standard is. And the Razer can go up to 8,000 Hertz polling rate. So even, you know, double what the Corsair can. Now, you know, that all sounds really good in marketing and reviews and everything, but does it really make a difference? Um, I, I don't know that most people would actually notice that difference and that speed increase. If you are in the very top tier of gamers and you can notice, you know, the smallest, you know, split millisecond of input difference, maybe that would make a difference to you. But once again, if you are going for the best of the best, if you are trying to be as competitive as you can be, you know, making sure that you have the hardware that is able to support that is one way to do that. And so, you know, a, a keyboard with a higher polling rate is gonna be more beneficial. So moving on to just overall experience with all those things combined together, you know, which one do I find myself preferring from these two keyboards? I do think that I end up preferring the Razer, even though it is a little bit more expensive. And you know, it's a little bit over $200, but this kind of just feels a little bit more like a $200 keyboard than what the Corsair does to me. And I attribute that to, you know, things like the dial, which has less play to it. It doesn't feel as loose and plasticky as what the K100 does. Also the overall typing experience feels a little bit better to me on the Razer. And like I said, the wrist rest feels a little bit more comfortable for me as well. So overall, you know, ergonomics, sound, functionality, build, I do find myself leaning towards the Razer Black Widow V4 Pro in this direct comparison. And one other thing there is that just aesthetically, I prefer the Razer as well. You know, if you're going for RGB, this has more of it with the wrist rest down here. You know, it's bright and brilliant. Everything's really easy to see there. As you can see on the Corsair, the side of the RGB is a little bit kind of perforated. So there's just not as much there as what there is on the Razer. And I also prefer the look of the Razer up at the top of the keyboard here. Even though the Corsair isn't necessarily much bigger dimension wise, it looks like it is because it has this extra lip, this extra riser up here on top for the volume roller and the IQ scroll. So um, for me personally, my own personal preference, I do prefer the Razer. That being said, you know, if I was a streamer using uh, El Gato's Stream Deck, maybe the functionality of, you know, incorporating these GTs into the uh, Stream Deck software, maybe that would, you know, persuade me to go more this way, but that's not a need that I have uh, currently for myself. So the Razer is gonna be my pick. But if you are on a tight budget and you know that budget, you know, functionality wise, these keyboards are very similar. So if you wanna save a little bit of money, the Corsair is gonna be a good option. So hopefully this video comparison between the two gives you an idea of maybe what one would be best for you in your certain situation. We always see good sales and we're always posting them on 9to5toys.com, so make sure you're locked to that website and keep an eye out for both of these keyboards. You know, the K100 has been out for a long time now at this point, and so we should see some great deals on this thing. But that is gonna do it for our look at the comparison between the Razer Black Widow V4 Pro and the Corsair K100 RGB. Let us know what you think about them down in the comments below. And if you're looking for some other videos to watch, I'll link to our review of another Razer Black Widow keyboard, as well as our most recent review. And thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up so others can find it easier and consider subscribing. This is Jordan with 9to5toys. to